right, so in our last video, um, we created this drawing of the pyramid bracket. And this third video um, is going to be a um, new um, video about how to add GD and T to this bracket. Okay, so for the first thing that I'd like my uh, students that need to apply GD and T to their project to do is just a reminder their project is going to have a slightly different name. So I'd recommend changing this to that name for them this year there's this ms1111 um, and then we'll go down here we'll right click this in case they didn't um, already i know a couple of them already did 1111-01 um, and if you're watching this in a future year then you might have a slightly different project number all right and then for the other things that we need to do if you remember down here um, we had our different drawing properties and things like that. Um, so what I could do here is I could right click and go to properties um, right down here on this tab. And we're going to change this to 11.11-01 and hit save. And let's make sure that can change that. Name 1111 part number. Okay. 11101. Close. Okay. So we won't worry about that right now. Um, but we could re import that um, by just clicking in here if we wanted. Selecting all this. Going to drawing part number. Uh, for some reason, mine's not changing. That's okay. We can just manually change it too. 11, 11 show one. We'll do it that way. Um, so, the other things that we need to add is some GDNT here. And I'm, I'm going to say this is an intro level GDNT lesson. Um, so, we're not going to necessarily um, go into like full detail of like calculating the proper tolerance and things like that. I'm going to give some like very simple numbers um, because the point of this video is to show how to add different tolerances. In other videos, um, we'll talk about different designs and calculating tolerances between different parts and different bolt holes, clearances, and fasteners and things like that. All right, so the first thing I need to add because one of my students pointed out today, I have some very smart students. And one of them pointed this out today i'm missing a dimension okay um so we're going to use that dimension tool by hitting d and the dimension i was missing well we could assume that this is equal um that's not really a, a good way to go about it so we're going to add this dimension in here so i appreciate the student who caught that um, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit escape and we're going to move into this gdnt section so we're today we're going to add some datums and we're going to add a geometric tolerance to something. So first let's set up our datums. All right, so we're gonna hit datum. All right, and we're gonna start with A and we're going to rely on this bottom surface as being A because it's perpendicular to three of our features. I really like to have like my feature control frames in order like A, B, C or A, B where I can. Um, so the perpendicular surface that I said was important on the last video was this one right down here. All right, now I'm going to show you a couple ways you can do this. All right, so first way we could add a datum is we could pick the surface, just drag it out whatever way we want, and then click to place it. All right, the second way we could do it, so our datum B is actually going to be a mid-plane datum. All right, so datum B, because this part is symmetric, we're gonna set up datum B as the um, plane that comes right down the middle of this, which splits this 96 and a half, okay? So the next way we could do it is we could pick an existing um, leader line or extension line. We can click to place it there. We'll move it around after, clean it up to make sure that it's accurate. And then datum C, is going to be our back surface. That's gonna be the one that's perpendicular to this hole right here, okay? So we'll assume that this hole is gonna locate something. These, these are all going to um, be located by this slot. 
and then these holes are clearance holes. They have lots of clearance in there. Um, we won't go through the whole process of calculating that. I'll just give you know a nice round number. Okay, so datum C is going to be on the back side here. It's important we don't line it up with any of the um, dimensions when we're done because again, if it lines up, it means it's a midplane, right? So I'm just going to click right in between here, and then as I move my mouse, my little datum will stick out, and then I'm just going to click to place it. And then I'm going to go up here and hit the checkbox. Now let's clean up our datum so that they're accurate. So with my datum A, if I had picked a surface as opposed to a leader, I can pick my datum A and I can drag this little blue dot, all right, outward like so. And then if I have it like this, I usually have my datums face away from the part. It's a personal preference thing. Um, you also would be correct if you took your datum and you dragged it up like this. A lot of people like to do this where it looks like the little platform is you know, affected by gravity or something. I'm gonna center that as well. Um, but personally, I like to point my datums away from it. I like to kind of create a frame around my part. It's um, one of my mentors taught me that way. So that's the way I'm gonna do it. But I'm not saying that's the only way that works. Now for datum B, we can see these don't line up right now. Very easy to fix. So first hit escape so you don't have anything selected. Pick datum B and drag it right to that point. Let go and now it'll line up. And now that indicates that our center plane is the center of this 96 dimension. Now the thing you have to be careful of though, is as you drag this, this isn't gonna move with it. Okay, so I'm not gonna move it around right now, but if you drag this around, you gotta remember to move the B with it as well. Okay, and then C, I like to draw my datums outside, so I'm just gonna click that blue again, bring it outside of the dimension, okay? I don't like, I like to put my datums on the very outside like so, because if I have them somewhere in between here, while it's not wrong, I may accidentally move a dimension along the way and accidentally line them up. Whereas here, it's very obvious to me um, that my datum is separate from the dimension. Okay, so now this simplifies our part a little bit, and I'll get to that in one moment. So let's add some feature control frames in there. So we'll go up to Geometric Tolerance, right up here, and select our feature control frame. Now when we select it, I, I like the way that um, that they set this up in um, Onshape because we can kind of create our whole feature control frame and then click the thing we want to apply it to. All right, so let's start with um, this um, slot here. This slot probably needs to be pretty accurate so we'll make it pretty accurate. Our tolerance, keep in mind we're in metric, we'll make it 0.05. If we convert that over, that's about two thousandths of an inch. Okay, that's pretty darn accurate. And then the perpendicular plane, our primary plane, would be A. All right, so perpendicular plane is A. Our longest side, so to speak, and you could really put B or C here because it's gonna be located to both. These are our location planes, but I like to pick the longest one. I also like to go in alphabetical order where I can. Um, so B is going to be our secondary. And you can see as I move my cursor around, the little new feature control plane follows it. And then for the tertiary datum, it's going to be C. All right. Now there's other things I can add here. All right. I could add a compound feature control frame if I wanted. We're not going to do that on this part. I could change the way it's shown. I could add things to the leader, so like an all around or something like that. Um, I can also add things like max material condition, stuff like that. All right, I am gonna add some max material condition on this one. Um, we can talk, whoop, not there though. So we're gonna turn it off there. But we are gonna click back in this box. All right, and we're gonna give um, a little bit more freedom for our uh, manufacturer. So we are gonna add that max material condition, okay? Um, but also, I don't just wanna give them control linearly up and down and left and right. I wanna give them a range, so a zone that this thing will still work. So I'm gonna switch this to a diameter symbol up here as well. Now, all I need to do to add this is come over to my 14 and just click it and it's gonna apply it to that 14. 
Now for the 7.2, if I really wanted to calculate out, um, I could take my metric screw that goes through here, I could subtract that from my clearance hole, I could then multiply that by certain percentages to give it, you know, like a 60-40 split or something like that. For this um, exercise, I'm just gonna ask my students to add um, 0.1, uh, zero, okay? For our tolerance, you can see that updates immediately. I come over to my uh, hole call out, I click, and it applies it perfectly um, in my hole call out. And I may need to move things later, that's okay, I'll fix it when I do. All right, now the last one I have is this one down here. I'm gonna add the same sort of tolerance as before, so we're gonna change it to 0.05, all right? And this time I need to change my datums though, okay? So this hole drills through in this direction, okay? So I need to make C my primary datum because that's the one it's perpendicular to. C goes this way and my axis goes this way. So C, and then what I like to do is again, go alphabetical. So this is gonna be located to A. We can see it goes down 27 to A and it also is located to B. It's perfectly in the center, so I'm gonna to have to change some dimensions after. Um, as I explained to my students today, in theory, part of this is simplifying your drawing, okay? So I'm gonna switch this to B, and then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna apply it to here. Now, the other things I might add is tolerancing on these different things and stuff like that, but for now, that's not the lesson that we're working on here. This is just how to add GD&T information, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing. So now I'm gonna hit the checkbox. Say I'm done putting these in. And now I need to go around, before I start cleaning things up, I need to make sure that my drawing is actually dimensioned in the way that I'm saying. Okay, so first off, let's start with this slot, okay? So this slot is located to A for primary, so it's gonna be perfectly perpendicular, going straight down here, B, Okay, so B is my center plane. Well, that means this dimension is no longer needed. And the reason is, is this dimension locates my slot all the way to the side, whereas my B datum's right in the middle. So if I click this and delete it, I've now simplified my drawing, but I've also indicated by not putting a dimension here that the center of this slot is exactly on this B datum, okay? So the dimension is zero. If I have nothing there, it's assumed. All right, so the next thing I need to think about is, is it dimensioned to C? Okay, because C was my tertiary datum. It is. That means I need, now need to pick the dimension that goes to C. And you can actually click or hover over this little dimension box that pops up when you select it. So if I select it, this little dimension box here, I hover over it. Keep moving my mouse. And I can now come over here, change the tolerance to a basic dimension indicating that that 20, 20 um, so I'll hit escape here, 21 dimension is affected by this 0.05 tolerance down here. All right, now the next, so that one's covered. I have my B and my C. My B is zero, so there's nothing here. My C is 21, okay? Now I can go to these holes. Well, my Again, A is perpendicular. B are these two dimensions. So I can click this, hold control, click this, then go over this little icon again, switch both of them to basic. And I can hit escape. So they're 36 to the middle, 36 to the middle. If I had a 72 dimension, by the way, I could make that basic as well. All right, so then I'm gonna go to my C. My C is the one that goes from here all the way up to here. So I'm gonna pick this. Hover over this again, switch it to basic. Now I'm gonna hit escape, okay? So now that one's indicated. I've covered all of the basic dimensions for that hole. Now let's go down to here, all right? So C is my perpendicular datum. I don't have any dimensions to that because it's perpendicular. It's my primary. A is this dimension down here. So now that means from here down to here measures to A. So I'm gonna click my 27, hover over this, really don't give you much time to do that. And I'm gonna switch this to basic. 
Then I'm gonna look for my B while it's perfectly in the center. Again, I can eliminate this dimension entirely because I've added GD&T. My GD&T indicates that this is now centered because there's no dimension here, all right? So then lastly, I'm gonna take a look at my whole drawing and I'm gonna say, okay, is this clean? Am I making the best use of space? Well, now that I have a couple more things, I'm gonna move this down. I'm gonna move this up a bit, make a little more space. And now I can take this, move it down a little bit, make a little more space, make things easier to see. Okay, line those things up. Maybe I wanna space these things out a little bit more. just because um, I have like some basics on there now. Okay, that look, this view looks pretty good to me. And then I can take this C, you want to move that out, move this out to line up with the other one, move this until it lines up with my 12 for some consistency. This looks pretty good. Maybe I'll space out that a little bit more. It's just minor cleanup stuff, okay? So it's not super critical that you go through and make sure everything's exactly the same space or whatever, but just understand when you spread things out like this, it makes it easier for your manufacturer to see what the heck's going on here, okay? So this looks like it's really far away now. Maybe a little confusing to look at. If this was a more detailed part, I might make a detailed view of this. So if there were more features, but now, my entire part, so if I right click, zoom to sheet, my entire part is done, okay? So I've now updated all of my gd &T, and because of that, I've eliminated some dimensions and now my drawing's a little bit easier to understand.